Welcome to the Infinity Academy from the Dice Gods. This is Hydra. Today's video is the third of four looking at the core concepts and mechanics of Infinity. And this time, we're all about them dice. This series is for players who are thinking about starting the game, have just bought in, had their first few games, or are returning to Infinity after a break. We'll get you up to speed with the core ideas so you can enjoy your game, not spend your time with your nose in the rulebook. As before, this video is good for players of the full N4 experience and Code 1 alike. If you've been following along with the whole series so far, welcome back. Apologies there's been a break, but we plan to get Academy videos out monthly now. If you're enjoying them and want to support us, consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon. Later videos will have an extended version for channel supporters, which will include more information, ideas and tactics. Not bad for the price of a quarter of an airport sandwich, if you ask us. But don't worry, the main Academy videos will always be right here on the channel and free. With that said, let's get into the three types of dice rolls in Infinity. Normal, face-to-face, -face, and saving rolls. As we discussed in previous videos, these again only take place in the resolution step of an order. Remember that. This means that as soon as you roll your dice, you're not able to declare any further skills or AROs. So make sure they're all called before you pick up your dice. Let's start with a fundamental idea in dice rolls, success values. As we discussed in the last video, when trying to complete a skill, called a skill test, you start with a statistic from your trooper's profile. For example, if you want to stab someone, it's the CC stat. When shooting, use the BS stat. When throwing a grenade or dodging, the PH stat. Or when booping the boop, the whip stat. Some of these may then be modified by the range between the trooper and its target, cover, and other abilities which we won't be discussing today. When these modifiers have been applied to the starting stat, we get a success value. Let's use a Kurgat from the Marat Aggression Force as an example. So, if our Kurgat is armed with a boarding shotgun and shooting at a target 10 inches away out of cover, it would work out like this. The Kurgat starts at a BS 12. The range modifier for a boarding shotgun at 10 inches is 0, and there are no negative modifiers for cover. So, the Kurgat has a success value of 12. BS 12, no range modifier, no cover modifier. So if every 12 or less rolled, one hit is scored. However, if the target being shot at is at 10 inches again, but this time in cover, then the Kurget gets a minus three to hit the target. So again, the base BS is 12, zero for range on the boarding shotgun, and minus three for cover. So the success value is now nine. For every nine or less rolled, one hit is scored. And one last example on this. Let's bring the target a little closer, down to six inches, but again in cover. We start with the base stat of 12 for the Kurgat. Now being at below eight inches, the boarding shotgun gets a bit more spicy and gains a plus six modifier. The cover again generates a minus three to hit. So we start with the 12, add the plus six for range, taking us to 18. Then we take the minus three for the cover, which gets us to 15. The success value of this shot is therefore 15. As before, any dice rolls made by the Kurgat, which is 15 or less, will then score a hit. When a trooper rolls the exact value of their success value, this is called a critical success or, more commonly, a crit. These are especially important when making an attack, but more on that in a minute. Success values are crucial in Infinity, but you will use them a lot, so they get quicker and easier the more games you play. Let's get into those dice rolls. The first type of roll we're going to look at is a normal roll, where a trooper completes a skill check to which there are no arrows, or an enemy trooper doesn't, or can't respond, or we just don't care that they're arrowing. To be successful with a normal roll, the trooper must roll equal to or less than their success value. The most common type of normal roll which you'll see are mission-specific skills, such as booping a box, donking an antenna, or flipping a switch. You may also see this when healing one of your own troopers, or when an active player has their brave pants on. Two quick examples of a normal roll are, here's a simple one, my heckler hacker has just run up to this box and needs to open it to score a point. My heckler has a whip of 13, so I need a 13 or less to succeed. He rolls a 3 and is successful. The box pops open and the mission point is his. In this instance, I need to make the same play to open a box, but running up to the box will mean that I am seen by two of Lilith's troopers, who will ARO and shoot me. As I really need the box, I decide to ignore the two shots coming my way and boot the box. 
I roll one die against the Heckler's Whip of 13, rolls a 4, and succeeds. Crucially, this result is locked in. It doesn't matter what Lilith's troopers roll. They will also make a normal roll, and if successful, my Heckler will need to make saving throws. But the box will remain open. Now we get to the mechanic which ties all of the orders, arrows, and skills together. The face-to-face -face roll. This is by far the most common roll you're going to make. These happen when two opposing troopers act at the same time, with their skills possibly reducing or outright cancelling each other. We ran through the process of the face-to-face -face roll in our last video, but we'll recap the process and then dive into some more examples. The face-to-face -face roll happens when the active player declares an order which targets or affects an enemy trooper and the targeted trooper arrows in a way to either affect the active trooper or to avoid the skill which is targeting them. So for example, when an active trooper declares BS attack against a reactive trooper who declares BS attack as an ARO. Or when an active trooper declares CC attack against a reactive trooper in base-to-base -base contact and the reactive trooper decides to nope the hell out of there with a dodge. Once you've completed your order and skill declarations, we're into the resolution step where the dice shall fly. First, the wordy explanation. Then we do some examples so it makes a bit more sense. As before, calculate your success values. Then, in very clear view of your opponent, throw your dice. Any dice which are higher than the success value of the rolling player are removed as failures, leaving only successes. If one player has no dice left after this step, then they take one hit per dice left in their opponent's pool. If both players have dice left, then the remaining dice are compared. When we compare the dice, any dice which are under or equal to their success value cancel any and all successful dice of the opposing player which are of a lower value. If two successful die have the same value, they cancel each other. Now let's do some examples. Lilith is attacking my Hollow Man Spitfire with her Moderator Spitfire. Lilith has a success value of 13 on her four dice. I am firing back but need a 16 or less on my die as Hollow Men are just better. The dice are rolled and Lilith gets a 4, 6, 6 and a 12, whilst I roll a 6. That means all of our dice have succeeded, but my 6 cancels Lilith's 4. Then her two sixes and my one six cancel each other completely, leaving only her 12 to cause a single hit on my hollow man, which I then need to save. In this next example, Lilith is again the active player and has fired a Spitfire using four dice at me, needing a 13 to hit. I fire back with a Spitfire and arrow, needing a 16. Lilith rolled a one, three, six, and a six, whilst I roll a 10. As all dice are under their success value, they are all taken on to be compared. As my dice is higher than all of Lilith's, I cancel all of her dice and score one hit on her miniature. We call that an oof. The same setup for our last example, but this time it goes a bit bonkers. Lilith again needs 13, but rolls 2, 3, 9 and 17. The 17 is removed as a failure. I roll and score a 9 as well, so my 9 cancels Lilith's 2 and 3, but our 9 cancels each other. At the end of the order, nothing happens. Does that all make sense? If not, jump back and have a watch of those again. This type of opposed roll is one of the most common types of roll you'll make and is an essential mechanic to get to grips with. And now the fun starts, because all of the above is absolutely true unless someone has rolled their exact success value which, as we discussed before, is called a critical or a crit. Crits are the absolute best result possible and cancel any other result from your opponent aside from another crit. If both players roll one or more crits each, then all dice, crits and non-crits are cancelled. It doesn't matter if one crit is higher than the other, crits always cancel crits. But if only one player rolls a crit, that crit will cancel any dice from the opponent, even if they're of a higher value. Now, let's see crits in action. I'm the active player and I bring the Dacker against Lilith with a hyper rapid magnetic cannon. I have 5 dice, hitting on 17 or less. Lilith is in a bit of trouble and her best option is to dodge on a 10. Dice are rolled and I bring the pain, getting a 2, 3, 5, 7 and an 11. However, Lilith manages to roll a crit, a perfect 10. The 10 then, as before, cancels my 1, 3, 7 and 8. So far so good. But even though my 11 is higher, the 10 is a crit, so it cancels it. Lilith can then complete her dodge move, and none of my shots land. Crit Mechanic in Infinity is one of the great cinematic moment makers. It is the little guy that shouldn't survive that somehow comes out from between a hail of bullets unscathed. 
It's those genius moments that will stick with you or stick in your throat long after the game is long completed. Now while we're talking about exceptions, let's take a look at the biggest one of them all. In Infinity, as you've seen, you need to roll equal to or under a value. Unless you're doing saving rolls, then that's out the window. In its most simple version, when you've taken a hit, you'll need the damage value of the weapon which hit you. So with a combi rifle, that would be damage 13, with a heavy machine gun, damage 15, and with a Spitfire, damage 14. From this value, you then subtract your arm value of the unit which was hit. Then, if that unit is in cover, you will take off another three. That becomes your success value-ish. You must then roll over this final value on a d20 for every hit taken. Yes, over, and no, not equal to. It is exclusively over that final value. Your trooper will then lose one wound or structure for every save that is failed. If they reach zero wounds or structure, they fall unconscious. If they go lower than zero, then they're dead and gone. Let's take a look at this odd mechanic in action. Back in our face-to-face -face roll earlier, I managed to squeak a shot past Lilith's moderator and score a hit with my Spitfire. The Spitfire has damage 14, the moderator has armor zero, so the moderator must roll more than 15 to save or lose a wound to fall unconscious. That comes because the damage is 14 and you must exceed it. With an armor value of zero, it's necessary for her to roll 15 or more. And let's look at the other muckier end of the scale. We have a Yotam tag who takes three hits from an HMG. An HMG has damage 15, so the tag could be in trouble. The tag is in cover and has an arm of 10. Starting with the 15, we take off the 10 arm, leaving five. Then take another three for the cover to leave two. The tag needs to beat this two, so must roll three dice of three or higher to avoid losing structure points. And this is why playing a Yotam tag is not conducive with keeping friends. If you're happy with armor saves, there are some common exceptions you need to know about. First, crits are at it again. For every crit that a trooper suffers, they must make one additional save. So if you get unlucky and get hit by three crits, you will need to make six saves. Three normal ones and three extra ones for the crits. If more likely you take three hits and just one is a crit, then you will need to make four saves. Three for the hits and one extra one for the crit. Nasty, eh? Next, you will see some weapons have ammo types. These mostly have impact on armor saves. We don't recommend using ammo types on your first game, but the most common types of ammo are AP, or armor piercing ammo, which halves the arm value of the trooper hit, rounding up where needed. So if the Yotam had been hit by an AP HMG, the armor would have been five, not 10. Breaker. This takes saving rolls against the BTS stat of the hit trooper, not the arm. You'll often see high arm units have a lower BTS, so this can be a tasty option. DA, or dual action ammo, causes a trooper to take two saves for every hit taken. As discussed above, the target then loses one wound or structure for each failure. So you can lose two wounds from a single DA hit, or, if it's grit, potentially three from one hit. EXP, or explosive ammo, is like socks at Christmas. Fun to give, disappointing to receive. For each hit a trooper receives with explosive ammo, they must make three saving throws. This can, of course, be devastating. If you crit with an explosive shot, then this becomes four saves. Just like with socks. No one's thanking you for that one. Next we have shock ammo. Being hit by shock ammo means that if a trooper fails enough saves to drop to zero wounds, they actually go straight to dead. Normally, when you get to zero wounds, you fall unconscious and can be healed by a doctor. This takes you straight off the board. You're gone. It's over. There are other ammunition types, but these are the most common ones you'll see. And before you ask, yes, when they are combined, both effects apply. So where a missile launcher has AP plus XP, it causes three saving rolls per successful hit and halves the armor of the target. Even a Yotam will respect that. Right, that's the theory of dice rolls, skills, orders, the basics of infinity, what you're gonna do 90% of your games. Let's look at all of this in action, and we're gonna dive into the second turn of a game of the mission supplies between me and Lilith. As we join the game, my Nomad Sectorial, the Tunguska Jurisdictional Command, are on the move against Lilith's Shazvasti. The two armies are facing off over a box of supplies. The army, to claim the box, will gain vital intel and win the day. As we join the turn, 
the Tunguska forces are swinging into action. I start by counting my orders. I have six to spend. I activate my Krizaborach, heavy infantry, hoping to move him up to clean out some of the evil aliens. He moves up with one skill, then up with the second, stopping just short of where he can be seen. Another auras are on the Krizach, and he peeks around to draw a bead on an enemy. The Shazvasti Nox with HMG is in sight. The Nox declares a dodge, not fancying his charges against the big guy. Skills declared, we check ranges. Krizza is in good range, so with a plus three to hit. The Nox is, however, in cover, so the Krizza has a BS 13, gets plus three for range and minus three for cover, giving a success value of 13. The Nox dodges on his fizz value of 10. The dice are rolled, with the Krizza getting an extra dice due to one of his skills. I roll five dice for the HMG and score a one, four, seven, 13, and 19. Lither tries to dodge and succeeds on a one. So my 19 is a miss as it's over my success value. Our ones cancel and then Lilith needs to make four saves. One for each of the three hits and an extra one for the crit on 13. The save is against the HMG's damage of 15. The Nox has one armor and is in cover giving an extra three armor. Lilith therefore needs to roll 12 or more on four dice to survive. She rolls 14, 16, 13 and a six. The Nox falls unconscious and the order ends. The third order goes in the Krizza again, who's feeling confident, so moves up around the corner to see two Nox this time. They respond by dodging as I declare a split burst on them. Three shots into one, two into the other. Both fail their dodges, but one manages to make his armor saves and survives. In the next order, the Krizza idles and unloads everything into the surviving Nox, who dodges again. The Krizza needs a 13, scores two 10s and an 8, a 19 and a 15. The Nox manages to whiff his dodge on a 16 and needs to make three saves at over 12 due to cover. Fails two and disintegrates into a fine paste on the wall. That freed the route up for my interventor to make a run for the box. We spend an order on the interventor as he makes his run, popping around the corner to engage the last Nox before he can dive onto the box. I take my shot, plus three for range, minus three for cover. I need an 11. Of my three dice, I only managed one hit on an eight. The Nox responds with shooting and crits on an 11. The Interventor passes one save on a 19 but fails the other on a six and drops unconscious. And that's it, a part turn, order spend, skills and dice rolls. That is 90% of what you'll spend your time doing in Infinity. From here, the nuances are the different skills and equipment you can use. In our next video, we'll introduce you to missions in Infinity. Then it's your turn to play. We'll discuss our recommendation for your first mission, walk you through some setting up for the game, and then give you a demo of the first two turns. These four videos will get you into your first game of Infinity with confidence and understanding. But for now, that's it for the Infinity Academy today. We hope you found this video incredibly awesome. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments or catch us on social media. As ever, please like and subscribe, click the bell to stay up to date with us. And if you found this video really useful, please consider joining our Patreon or becoming a channel member to help this channel grow. Either way, thanks for joining us today. Thanks also to our Patreon and our members, including the mighty Joe Rogers. We will see you all again soon.